Hey guys, so I wanted to make a video about the K98AZ. Uh, make another one about it. I made a video about this gun like three years ago. It was kind of like a shooting review. Um, check it out if you want to see this gun being shot. Um, however, I just started thinking about this gun again um, whenever I did the video on the German G3340. So doing the research and everything, when I was looking at the measurements, like especially the weight of the G3340, um, I expected this gun to be like way lighter than, you know, like pounds lighter than pretty much every German Mauser ever since. But when I started looking at the weight, the weight on this is pretty close to the K98AZ. Um, so I started looking at the K98AZ and starting to try to figure out why exactly this gun for, for the length that it is, um, is as light as it is. Um, now, you know, light's a relative term. Um, but this AZ is uh, lighter than this K98K. And I can, just from holding it, I can definitely feel that this gun is, is heavier. Uh, this is the laminated wood version with the cup up plate and everything. So um, we'll get into a little bit more of that later on. Um, but I just wanted to sort of talk about the weight differences between the K98AZ and the K98K. Um, I'm going to take the stock off of the AZ and the K98K. I'm going to measure and I'm going to weigh things and I'm going to try to really figure out why the AZ is as light as it is. Um, and then, you know, hopefully you guys will learn some stuff in the process. I'm going to talk about a couple few little nuances about the, about the rifles as well. So um, let's just get straight into it. So we have the stock off the AZ here. And the first thing to really notice about this is the, uh, the barrel profile. This is just a straight, smooth taper. It starts off thick and it gets skinnier towards the barrel. Um, the K98K, just like the Gewehr 98, this uh, goes down and steps. So it's pretty much the same diameter here and then it steps down smaller and it steps down smaller. Um, so this, these steps, uh, I think are a little easier to machine. However, uh, they, they do make for a little heavier of a barrel. And the K98AZ barrel, it is a little bit thinner um, at the end, at the muzzle and uh, close to the chamber, it's about half a millimeter skinnier. So with this slightly thinner and uh, smooth tapered barrel, this, this does save weight. Uh, and even just sort of holding the, the two barreled actions. The, this is the K98K barreled action and it's, you can definitely feel the, you know, the, the weight difference in the two. The, the AZ is, is quite a bit lighter. So I've written down here, the AZ, the barreled action, the weight of this whole thing is uh, three pounds, 5.4 ounces. The K98K uh, barreled action weight is three pounds, 14.8 ounces. Um, so you do have a fairly significant about of, amount of weight um, just in the receiver and barrel um, on the K98K. Another thing to realize about these two is not only does the K98AZ barrel thinner and slimmer, but the K98AZ uh, receiver itself is, is thinner and slimmer. Um, the AZ uses sort of the old style uh, small ring Mauser design um, where the uh, K98K is sort of the large ring Mauser. Now I measured with calipers the, uh, the diameter, the, the width of the receivers. The width of the AZ receiver is 32.8 millimeters, which is like 1.3 inches. And the K98K uh, receiver is 35.8 millimeters, which is 1.4 inches. So you have, um, you have three millimeters or 0.1 inches difference in that. Um, that's another one of those things where it's not a whole lot of weight difference. It's not something you'd notice on its own. However, coupled with all the other uh, weight saving measures, it does sort of add up to this AZ being a, a good bit lighter. So here we have the, uh, the K98 AZ stock um, this is a solid beechwood stock. It has the same uh, bolt takedown inlay as the K98K rifle does. Um, and you can tell that this is pretty long. Um, even this top handguard is really long. Um, compare the top handguard to the K98K handguard right here. And the, the AZ handguard is, is really much longer. So putting the two stocks together like this, the, the AZ stock is on top. You can tell that it's a good bit longer than the K98K stock. So you would think that 
um, since the, uh, the AZ stock is longer, it uses more wood, you would think that it would be heavier. False. So this is the stock weight, including the whole stock, the top hand guard, the butt plates. So the K98AZ stock weight is two pounds, 10 ounces. And the K98K stock is three pounds, 1.6 ounces. So that is means that even though the K98K stock uh, is shorter, it uses less wood, uh, it is still 7.6 ounces heavier than my uh, AZ stock. Now the exact weight will really depend on the wood that's on your particular rifle. Laminated wood is heavier than beech. All of this is really starting to add up. Here we have the K98AZ bolt. This is just a standard 98 Mauser bolt. This is interchangeable with any other German 98. Uh, the, the only difference between uh, this bolt and a K98K bolt is that uh, these bolts were originally in the white, um, just like the uh, Gewehr 98 bolts were originally in the white. You can kind of tell here on some of the surfaces where it's kind of shiny still, but um, it's, pretty, it's pretty patinaed, which kind of makes it look like it's been uh, finished, but uh, it's, just, it's just some patina on here and some spots. Now the main difference between the K98AZ bolt and a K98K bolt is that uh, it's not a round knob, it's been sort of flattened here, and then it uh, has a, a texture added to it to make it grippy. Here's a K98K bolt, and it's just a uh, you know, circular knob. Of course, this whole thing is in a, it's in a nice blue finish. And the thing to note about the two bolts is that here the, on the left is the AZ. You can see it's a curve. It kind of is like this 90 degree curve. And then uh, the k 90 k bolt, it actually just kind of goes uh, out some and then straight down at an angle. Um, so the K98K bolt, when it's loaded in the rifle, um, it actually sticks out a little bit more. Um, where the AZ bolt, the handle kind of goes straight down. Um, and then it's that which kind of shows why the reason why it's cut is so that you can give you a little extra room and then some extra texture to, to work the bolt. Or on the K98K, the bolt just kind of sticks out and you can grab it and lift it up. Um, and, and using both of these, I think I prefer the K98K bolt a little bit. It just seems a little bit easier to get your hand underneath it. Here is the K98AZ uh, trigger guard and magazine. Uh, the biggest difference between the K98AZ trigger guard and the K98K is that um, this, the trigger guard loop here, it just sort of goes uh, straight up, uh, straight up and around. On the K98K trigger guard, um, it kind of goes into this little block here. This was actually meant to be a sling attachment point for the Gewehr 98. There's a hole drilled in it and uh, they would attach the sling there. If you can tell this little cutout on the back of the magazine here, this little cutout in the follower allows the bolt to be closed on an empty magazine. On the K98K, this little piece right here will catch a bolt. Um, they didn't, uh, they chose not to have that feature on the AZ. Um, from like a modern kind of recreational shooter, I think I like this more, but uh, as far as like a combat effectiveness or something, um, I think I would prefer this in combat to let me know that I'm not you know, about to chamber and shoot nothing. Another thing I think is worth mentioning is that you would think that all of these stock hardware parts would add a bit of weight to a uh, to an AZ, sort of comparing it to the K98K because they only need these stock pieces. However, the K98K needs additional pieces to sort of match uh, the same usability as the AZ. So um, what you need on a K98K is a sight hood because the um, this front sight's unprotected. Otherwise, the K98AZ's front sight is protected. And then the K98K it needs a cleaning rod in order to, in order to have the same stacking uh, function that the stacking hook gives a K98K. So now, whenever you add up these parts here, if you add up the K98K parts, what you get is 4.7 ounces for the K98K hardware. Uh, versus a 5.2 ounces for the K98AZ hardware. So this additional hardware really only adds 0.5 ounces to the overall gun, which is really not a lot at all. Here's a nice up close shot of the receiver. So we have the, uh, the Royal Crown here and the Air Force Arsenal. Uh, 1917 is when it was manufactured. Um, Above that, we have the, the bore diameter put on there. I can't quite make that out. 
it looks like seven, I, I'm not sure, but it's usually around 7.9. Um, then we have, of course, a four digit serial number with the, uh, with the suffix afterwards, which is underneath it. So it's 4257UU. Um, then over here, we have the receiver marking designation. So this is the uh, uh, KAR98 for Carabiner 98. Here with the stock off, we can see the markings on the barrel. So we have the same serial number that's on the receiver. We have some proof markings here, a lot more proof markings than you would find on a K98K. Um, this gun just really has all sorts of markings underneath it. All right, so I'm gonna show you uh, these three markings here and what they mean. So this first one here on the left, uh, this is for the hardness testing inspector mark. Um, the one in the middle is for the assembly test. Then on the right here, this is the, uh, the final fit test. Uh, now, if you can just make out that little tiny crown above the big one, um, what that marking means is that um, whatever it's, it's over, it failed. So this is over the hardness testing. So it failed the hardness testing. It had to go to a revision committee, and then um, the committee then had to, um, had to pass this. So it failed its initial hardness testing, and it, maybe it was retreated, something like that and then an inspector passed it after that. Uh, and then sort of each of these other ones, you know, passed without. So this is just something interesting to look for on your Mauser. You can see if it failed the initial one of these tests. The rear sight, now we can see that the rear marking starts at three. This is changed later on with the K98K to 100 meters, uh, but the K98AZ, it uh, starts off at 300 meters. It actually does shoot uh, a bit high. You really have to aim low of what you're hitting with this. And it goes all the way up to uh, 2,000 meters there. Uh, and if you flip this forward, it doesn't go quite all the way forward as a, as a K98K, but we do have the uh, similar markings underneath this. So it goes all the way to 2,000 there. This is actually just so that if you're lying down, you can flip this forward and then you know change the uh, the sights and then flip it back without getting up or exposing yourself. And here's the front sight of the K98AZ. So it has these protective ears built into it that protect the front sight from any uh, from any damage from like falling or dropping the rifle. It has this little protrusion here at the front, which is for attaching the muzzle cover to it. Um, this is a pretty nice sight setup. A lot of rifles do this. A lot of countries adopted front sight setting or front sight protectors like this um, sort of like the uh, the Swiss K31 um, I really like this front sight setup I prefer this the, to the later German uh, sight hood usage so you can kind of see the pattern where there's kind of a lot of little things that are um, that are lighter about the AZ and uh, and all those little things really do add up so I have the weight totals here uh, now the uh, the AZ is comes in at seven pounds 15.3 ounces so just under eight pounds now the k98k couldn't believe it weighed exactly nine pounds exactly nine pounds so uh, now your guns are going to weigh a little bit different it really just kind of depends on the the wood that's on them but i mean my az is uh, just just over a pound lighter than the k98k um, which is really crazy that's one of those things where uh, carrying a rifle on your back, that, that pound really will make a, make a pretty big difference. So I went ahead and weighed the 3340 as well. Uh, this guy came out to be uh, 7 pounds, 5.6 ounces. So the 3340 is a good uh, 10 ounces lighter than the AZ. And I mean, really, um, when, you're, when you're talking about K98Ks, that 3340, you know, is you know, a pound and a half lighter. If you ever see an AZ for sale and it's a good price, you're probably gonna wanna pick it up because these are, these are sweet, sweet guns and they're kind of underappreciated um, because, you know, everyone thinks of the K98K of World War II as the, as the German Mauser, um, but these actually served in both world wars. You know, it's pretty common to see these AZs and, and photos during, during the early German campaigns in the war and you see AZs, you know, all the way into Russia, so um, these are these are neat guns that just have a really long service history, really neat developmental history. So um, yeah, this is it's a cool gun. I really enjoyed making this video and learning a lot about it. You know, you know, measuring all the parts and weighing everything. So 
Um, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you guys really appreciate it. It took a long, long time to make this video and just taking the guns apart and cleaning and prepping and everything. Appreciate you watching, guys. If you like this type of content, you want to see more of it, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me out a lot. And then uh, you'll be notified, hopefully, whenever I uh, make a new video. So I try to put one of these out every week. So it should be every Friday. You should see a new video out by me unless, you know, something's crazy and I can't make one. But you'll see something new just about every Friday from me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.